Hey Wendy, thanks for popping into my quick uh, intro into telehealth, virtual consults and remote patient monitoring. I'm really excited to bring this into the company within a few months. So there's a couple of definitions that are used throughout the presentation that I'm sure you'll be familiar with. And to explain it a little bit better, I've just brought in our fake patient, Amit, who is a 42 year old living in rural Victoria who is struggling with uncontrolled diabetes. Now he's traveling a long way into Melbourne for his endocrinology appointments and his team have recently brought up telehealth. So let's show him what it's all about. Basically, it's a provision of health services over the phone or via virtual consultation or video. Um, and it includes remote patient monitoring or RPM, which is uh, tools that patients use, such as saturation monitors or uh, blood pressure monitors or whatnot, uh, to report back to their team um, on their health stats. And it includes you know, sharing of data uh, between the two. So how would Armit send this back to his team? So he would have a glucometer on his arm and simply those stats would go into an app which would go back to his endocrinology team. So in terms of nature and scope, RPM is quite broad. So uh, really it can look after anything like cardiology, uh, respiratory, which was exemplified by the New South Wales government in COVID. Um, and that's one of the case studies that I'm talking about today. They did an initiative which was to keep out people out of hospital um, via using RPM. Um, now, Temzu is another case study that I'm introduce introducing today, which is the Telehealth Emergency Management Response Unit in Queensland. And they were set up to allow rural and remote Queenslanders to access um, emergency services in the early 2000s. So in terms of nature and scope, uh, remote patient monitoring effectively is monitoring um, remotely using health tools. And in terms of scope, yeah, anything's possible really. Um, same thing with virtual consultations. So um, it's 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 basically having health appointments remotely. Um, it can be done via video call or telehealth or whatnot. Um, and this was also a really big part of both Temzu and the New South Wales um, innovation for the COVID screening. Um, why do they work? Obviously very convenient for people like Armit. Uh, they provide access to rural and remote patients or patients that can't actually get to the face-to-face -face appointments. This of course reduces cost. It doesn't mean that the, the um, health professionals can't see real-time time data, they definitely can. And it allows for early intervention. But there are issues. A lot of people um, still don't understand technology and this uh, can lead to an actual digital divide. Um, and the other thing is people are concerned with privacy and sharing of data. Um, technology and um, Wi-Fi and infrastructure is a problem and it was a problem for the Temzu case study specifically. Um, some people uh, struggled with using the um, technology available to them. Um, funding and cost, uh, the New South Wales initiative as an example uh, struggled because of the cost of the remote patient monitoring devices um, and availability of clinicians, not just to run the um, the initiatives, but actually to interpret the data and um, basically consult with other professionals. Similar to the barriers for implementation, so um, knowledge of uh, clinicians and um, users of RPM and virtual consultation, um, they have to know it to really engage in it. Again, data privacy, um, integration with current health systems, um, people just honestly avoiding it because of fear or not being familiar with it. And of course, we've got infrastructure here as well. So long-term impact of um, uh, COVID on telehealth, there's an increased adoption of telehealth and repo remote patient monitoring now, expanded access, for example, to Armit in rural Victoria or the Queenslanders in the Temzu example. Um, it's going to be really integrated with current systems telehealth. In fact, it's um, like a permanent Medicare item now. Um, it's going to improve our technology infrastructure, the NBN, for example, and it's going to change our funding models and change policy. So, for example, a lot of private health insurers are looking into um, putting money into digital health programs and have their own telehealth GPs and things like that these days. So to conclude, 
These days, thanks to telehealth, Amit has really well controlled diabetes. He sees his specialist remotely um, every quarter, but he's still having his um, health stats monitored by his endocrinologist via his glucometer and the app that he uses. So thanks to you know using the app, his health literacy has improved substantially. And I hope this gave you a good example of how great telehealth is, and I'm really excited to bring it into our company. Thanks.